big pleasure to hear that <laughs> band. Do these records do that band justice? Yeah, I don't know. He did pretty good without the drums in those days, you know. Oh, he didn't use the drums at he all? He didn't have no drums, and then uh, they didn't have mics, and they just had one big horn, you know. Did like they a, line you all up, like the, on a bandstand? Or? Well, uh, we stood in front of this horn yeah. and played, and any man that had a solo had to get in that horn, else he wouldn't be heard, you know. So that's the, the advantage they have today, you know, with the... Well, when you played those breaks with Joe Oliver, were the two of you standing right in front of the horn? In front of the horn, yeah. yeah. She wouldn't have caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Had you played yeah. with with Oliver before you came up to Chicago? Well, he used to come by the uh, Liberty and Medita yeah. there, where the, the Storyville yeah. lightly. He used to come back, and I used to play in the hooker talk, and he used uh -huh. to come from down in the Storyville and come up there where I played. Because he got off at 12 o'clock at night and seeing yeah. they threw the key away where I played, you know. So <laughs> he'd come up there and sit down and listen to me play, and then he'd blow a few for me, you know, and yeah. try to show me the right things. Well, when he went on to Chicago, did you think he would send that, for you? No, at that time, I had no idea he would. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was playing in the Tuxedo uh, Brass Band and with Kid Ori too. Mm -hmm. And I just had left the excursion boats. I yeah. went in there in 1919. And then I played with Kid Ori. And, and then around 1922, I was playing with the Tuxedo Brass Band, Celestan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that's when King Oliver sent for me to play second trumpet with him at the Lincoln Gardens. And you were surprised? I was surprised. I was happy. Couldn't nobody else get me out of New Orleans but him. <laughs> I wouldn't take that chance. <laughs> but you hadn't heard the band until you I got to Chicago. I hadn't heard his band until yeah. I got to Chicago. And then I, uh, when I heard it at the door, I said, I ain't good enough for his band. I think I'll go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, uh, that was the highlight of uh, you know, my biggest moments. Well, was this a, a different kind of a band than bands that uh, you had played with in New Orleans? Well, uh, it was the same setup, but uh, see, we didn't have no pianos in New Orleans. Ah, we had guitars. Yeah. Lil was on the piano here. See what I mean? And was he using two cornets before you came no, up? No, just by himself. Yeah. And I don't know, the band was wailing. Yeah. And, uh, I fit right in there with sitting with Joe because I admired him so anyway, right. you know? Well, did you, when you, when you first came in to hear the band, uh, were they playing tunes that you knew? Well, the usual the Dixieland numbers in yeah. New Orleans, because there was others that I didn't know, like yeah. uh, these, they would come up later, he wrote these. Mm -hmm. But we played the usual Panama and uh, mm -hmm. the things that we did in New Orleans, you know, with the, the blues and things like that. Now, before you started in with a, with a band like that, with Joe's band, when you got to Chicago, did you have to rehearse with them? And, and, uh, no, I just went to work. Just went to work with them? Yeah, that's wow. all. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I knew all the boys, yeah. and the, 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 the routine, you yeah. know. And I just sit in there and went to work the next night. Well, now when he would I do it, I played a... second trumpet to everything he played. Uh huh. Just like that. Second, yeah, yeah. second cornet at the time. Yeah. We both was using cornets, you know. Well, now when you went in to make a record date like Snake <laughs> Rag, and uh, had you been playing this tune? Had he been? Had he been? Uh... Not this one. Yeah. It's one of them he made up yeah. for the Jeanette record when he started making records and he started being a writer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot of that stuff come up later, you know. Would you rehearse that then in the studio before you recorded well, it? Well, we'd rehearse that on the job. You uh -huh. know? And by the time we get to the studio, all they do is cut, uh, cut it up and time it. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, no trouble at all, you know, to make them records because they'd make one after another. It wasn't as particular as it was today, you know. Well, you don't think you made mistakes in there, do you? Well, it ain't that, <laughs> but uh, we could have had uh, more lead. Uh-huh. So we could have pushed Joe up or stand him out, or we could have played a little softer. Or we Put a balance on it. So yeah. they could have heard that lead. Yeah. That's where, in all them old records, you lose that lead. Uh-huh. See what I mean? You notice uh, mm -hmm. when everybody got the blowing that, and then you, and the lead was gone. Now, you spoke before about how they didn't have the drums. Uh, Baby Dodge just played wood blocks. Uh, uh, on the I doubt if Baby was there yeah. on those dates. Uh -huh. They didn't need him, no way. Uh, they didn't use drums at all in regard. No drums at all at that time. They were scared it would uh, throw the needle off. I see. 
Yeah. So we got very good. But the only thing I have about those early recordings that he, he didn't get that lead uh -huh. much. And that's what I heard him because uh, you, you couldn't do, you couldn't uh, tell Joe what to do. Yeah. He was the boss. Yeah. Well, now those breaks that you two took on there. Well, yeah, uh, I put notes to his lead, whatever he made. Uh, I just, we didn't write it. Did you rehearse it? No, just no. for the moment. You he tell me, he tell me while the band is playing, yeah. what are you gonna play on that? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> now I figure out my notes. <laughs> it gives and you that's cues, why right? all the musicians used to come around and hear us yeah. do that. You know, they thought that was a little secret we had. <laughs> you had everybody cool on that. <laughs> yeah, Dix and Louis and Nico, Paul yeah. Whiteman, and all the boys used to come around. You know. And they thought that was something. And he would change the things he was going to do from night to night until. Yeah, whatever he was yeah. going to do, he let me know about four or five balls ahead yeah. while the band was jumping, you know. <laughs> was it, was it uh, a different kind of excitement to play with, with this band uh, coming up from New Orleans for you, for the inspiration? That was a you? big thing for me. Yeah. Yes, it was. Because uh, I admired Joe so much. Yeah. For him to send for me, I thought that was something. <laughs> now, did you get, in, in this band, uh, when you were playing second cornet to him, did you get to play solos all by yourself, too? Oh, uh, very seldom. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, one or two records, uh, I think it was Chimes, Blues, yeah. or something like that. But uh, I never wanted to do nothing over Joe. Uh-huh. Uh, did, you, did you sing at all? No. Not in that time? That came later. Yeah. Because uh, he knew I was singing, but the, the main thing was to kind of play with him. Yeah. And I was singing in a little quartet, and he knew all of that, you know? Uh, was there any vocalist with the band? No, no vocalist. No, no, no. Just, but then you made records shortly after that. After with, that, with, yeah. uh, with vocalists, with Bessie yeah. Smith. And but that was when I went with Fletch Henderson, yeah. and after I left Joe, yeah. 1924. I thought uh, we could play one of the uh, records by Ma Rainey that you played on. Uh, as an example of the kind of blues of that period and the blues singers and the way in which you worked with them. Uh, this one is called Counting the Blues by Ma Rainey with the accompaniment by Louis Armstrong and Fletcher Henderson, group from the Fletcher Henderson Band. Ma Rainey's Counting the Blues. 